outline the basic requirements that you would consider when selecting a guard or safety devices for a bench top grinder. 4. Oh the guard or safety device should be suitable for the machinery. The guard should reduce the accident rate rather than increasing the accident rate. Select standard guard or safety device and it should be easy to use. The guard should be tamper proof. The guard should not obstruct the working cycle of the machine if required in such operations. D. Outline the merits and limitations of an interlock guard. Merits. The guard is intended to allow frequent access to a machine or danger zone by removing the power source and preventing the equipment from operating while the guard is open. When a guard is removed a safety interlock system prevents machine operation for example, a microwave oven has a hinged door on the front to allow easy access, this door is interlocked so that power to the microwave generator is shut off when it is open. Limitations the main limitation of an interlocked guard is that it is possible to bypass the system so that the machine can be operated with the guard open. With simple interlock systems this is easily done, but even complex interlock systems can be defeated by a determined person. The dangerous parts or machinery may not be addressed as the equipment is opened, and this may put the operator at risk, though this can be overcome by good design and consideration of rundown times. Trip devices. Trip devices are protective devices that do not put a physical barrier between the operator and the dangerous parts of machinery. Instead some form of sensor is used to detect the presence of the operator and stop the machine. Trip devices are intended to minimize severity of an injury and are often used as an additional control measure. In combination with an interlocked access gate to ensure that an operator does not gain access by climbing over a fence or being locked in by a colleague. 8. Identify four mechanical hazards presented by pedestal drill and outline in each case how injury may occur. Page no colon 417. Entanglement with the rotating drill bit or chuck. Stabbing or puncture by the drill bit during normal use or if the bit breaks. Puncture by swarf ejected during metal cutting. Impact if struck by the workpiece if the bit jams and the workpiece rotates. Drawing in at nip points between motor and drive belts. Electricity. Noise. Hot parts, especially the drill bit. Health hazard from cutting fluid, for example dermatitis. 9. A. Identify hazards associated with the use of a cement mixer. Entanglement with rotating drum or drive motor. Drawing in at nip point between motor and drive mechanism. Crushing between drum and drum stop when tipping. Friction or abrasion on contact with moving drum. Electricity. Ergonomics and manual handling injuries during loading. Health hazard from cement dust inhalation, irritant, and contact with wet cement, corrosive. Hazards due to the fuel, electricity or petrol. Being struck by vehicles operating in the area. B. Outline control measures that can be used to reduce the risks of injury to operators of a cement mixer. Location of the mixer on firm, level ground. Location away from traffic or where traffic is controlled. Fixed guards to motor and drive mechanism. Routine inspection and portable appliance testing and use of residual current device, RCD, for electrically powered equip. Safe storage of petrol and control of ignition sources for petrol powered equipment. Avoid use in confined spaces due to emission of exhaust gases. Reduction in manual handling or positioning of cement bags close to the equipment. Use restricted to trained operators only. Hand protection, respiratory protection, overalls and eye protection, splash resistant. Hearing protection to reduce noise exposure. 10. Outline four control measures to reduce the risk of injury from pedestal drill. Fixed guards over motor and drive mechanisms. Adjustable, possibly interlocked, guard over chuck and drill bit. 
clamp to secure workpiece to base. Eye protection, impact resistant. Hearing protection may be necessary. Routine maintenance, including inspection and portable appliance testing for electrical safety. Use restricted to trained operators only. 11. In a factory conveyor system is used to transfer manufactured articles to the warehouse area. Identify the control measures to be taken to reduce the risk of injury to workers from the conveyor. Fixed guards on drums. Enclosure of conveyed items by side guards. Trip wires, if necessary, along the full length of the conveyor. Emergency stop buttons. Safe access at regular intervals. Avoid loose clothing. Restrict access. Wearing bump caps. Regular maintenance by competent workers. 12. A factory producing furniture uses wood in the manufacturing process and is concerned about the health risk of wood dust. A. Identify operations which are likely to produce high levels of wood dust in the workplace. 4. Sawing. Rooting. Planning. Turning. Cleaning items or areas with compressed air lines. B. Identify health risk which could be associated with the wood dust. 4. Dermatitis. Allergic respiratory effects. Mucosal. Non-allergic respiratory effects. C. Outline control measures which could reduce the risk from the wood dust. 12. Installing local exhaust ventilation. Provide respiratory protective equipment. Provide other personal protective equipment. Good standards of housekeeping. Vacuum cleaning equipment should be maintained properly. Washing facilities for workers. Separate storage for workers clothing and laundering. High standard of personal hygiene by changing overalls and washing hands before eating and drinking. 13. A. Identify four hazards associated with the use of photocopiers. 4. Drawing in and entanglement from contact with moving parts. Electricity. Contact with hot parts. Health hazard from ozone. Irritant gas. B. Outline the precautions that should be taken in order to reduce the risk to the health and safety of Fixed and interlocked guards enclosing all mechanical hazards. Routine inspection and portable appliance testing. Use in a ventilated room. Routine inspection and testing should be done for the photocopiers. 14. Portable electrical equipment, for use at work, should be in good condition and free from defect. A. Outline the features of portable electrical equipment that should be checked by the user before use. 6. Tools and parts are only used for their intended purpose, within their design specification, for example the maximum speed of a cutting disc should not be exceeded, and in an environment that they are suitable for. Necessary guards and safety devices are always used, for example the self-adjusting guard fitted to a portable circular saw. Necessary personal protective equipment is always used, for example eye protection when using a chainsaw. Trailing power cables or pipes are carefully positioned so that they do not present a trip hazard and will not be damaged by the tool or passing vehicles, etc. Care is taken to ensure that ejected parts do not present a risk to others nearby. This may require that the area is fenced or cordoned off or that the tool is only used at specific times. B. Identify additional features of portable electrical equipment that should be inspected during periodic formal inspection by an appointed person. 2. O. Check out the instrument for its working condition. O. Check out if any worn out or damaged parts needs to be removed or replaced.